We all have preconceived notions about the privacy of various desktop operating systems. Windows is generally considered as a nightmare, macOS has a self-built reputation on privacy that might be undeserved, and Linux is generally viewed as the most private operating system. But we don't really have any real data on what these operating systems collect and what they do with it. So today we're gonna take a look at Windows, macOS and various Linux distros and see what data they collect, where it goes and how bad it is. And also how good this sponsor is. This video is sponsored by ProtonMail, the private, open source and encrypted mail service. Proton gives you a free email address, a calendar, an online storage space and a VPN. So you get a whole suite of services for free that you can upgrade with paid plans. ProtonMail also has some extra privacy related features like protecting you from email trackers. Most companies insert trackers into their emails, usually their small or transparent images that reveal information to the sender when they're being displayed. This lets companies know when you open their emails, where you are located and the device you use. This data is then used to match with other web browsing data and profile you online. With over 50% of all emails containing some kind of tracker, your email privacy could be at risk. With ProtonMail, you don't have to worry about that. They block all known trackers by default. So if you want to make sure that your email experience is as private and secure as can be, click the link in the description below and create your own free ProtonMail account. You can even import all your existing mail into it. And we're going to start with Windows because it's the most used desktop operating system in the world. So if you've installed Windows 11 recently, you're familiar with the very lengthy setup process where you can uncheck a lot of toggles to try and limit what the operating system collects. All of this is labeled as telemetry, which is a general term that should mean info that we can use to make sure we focus on improving what actually matters to our users but is now more generally used to avoid saying personal data collection. And to be clear, not all telemetry is bad. The data you voluntarily send to KDE or to GNOME is not personal data. It's good telemetry that's optional. So for Windows, even if you uncheck everything, you still have to agree to send required telemetry data to Microsoft. You can't entirely disable it, unless you do it through a script and this can introduce compatibility problems. Now what the OS will collect is the following. First, Microsoft Store Logs, which will let Microsoft know what you installed, updated, what downloads you started, what downloads you suspended and resumed. This data will be associated with your Microsoft account. The second is network data. You'll send the speed of your network adapter as well as the IMEI number and the mobile operator if you're using a cellular network. Third, hardware information, as in the amount of RAM, storage, the speed of your CPU, the battery capacity and the like. Fourth, accessory data. You'll send the complete list of devices you have connected to your computer like printers, controllers, USB sticks, gaming or streaming accessories and the like. Fifth is application related data. So for each app, Microsoft will know the total time you ran it, the CPU cycles attributed to it and the number of crashes. And sixth is event metrics. These are just various logs of what happened on your system. They're the most nebulous category. So that's a lot of data. And that's if you unchecked everything else. If you left everything enabled, you're going to send a lot more. You'll send inking and typing data, so metrics of what you typed or wrote with your stylus. You'll also send speech recognition data, like what you said to Cortana, for example. There's also the activity history, so every document you opened, every website you visited, and the like. And fortunately, all these things can be disabled, unless you're in the insider program, in which case you have to have telemetry enabled all the way to stay in the program. But that's just what Microsoft tells you about if you read their privacy policy. Because if you run a connection analysis tool on a default fresh vanilla Windows install without any additional software, you'll find a few more things. Recently, a YouTuber called the PC Security Channel analyzed a completely fresh Windows install, an ISO straight from Microsoft's website. They used Wireshark 
And what they found was that Windows makes a few connections to third parties it never really told you about. I left a link to their full video in the description below if you want to check everything they found. But basically, there's a direct connection to a website owned by McAfee called TrustSource.com. This is on a bog standard Windows install, no manufacturer bloatware and no McAfee installed either. Then there's a request to scorecardresearch.com, which is an internet trends research company, part of Comscore. Windows 11 also pings Bing and MSN.com, even though you didn't even open a web browser yet. And finally, there's a request to privacyportal.onetrust.com. Microsoft probably subcontracts data treatments to this company to comply with various privacy regulations around the world, or they use this software to manage user data. And it's a lot of crap on a very vanilla install with no programs installed whatsoever. These are all third parties. They should not be here, or at the very least, Microsoft should tell you that they contact them before they do. So what exactly can Microsoft do with all this data? Well, they have more than enough to completely fingerprint your device. With the hardware data you can't disable, coupled with the network data, they can reliably identify you on the internet, which means advertisers that use Microsoft's network also can. Second, they can reliably tell what you use in terms of apps and what type of content you watch online or create using various applications. Third, it means Microsoft sort of has a key logger on your computer if you enabled inking and typing data. They know exactly what you typed or wrote and use that to suggest relevant words if need be. And finally, it means Windows sends some data to third parties without it being explicitly mentioned in the setup process at all. So yeah, for privacy, a vanilla Windows install is really, really bad. It's not a preconceived notion, it's facts. Fortunately, you can disable all the optional stuff straight from the settings. You can go to the privacy and security options and go into each category and disable everything there. Now for the required telemetry, you'll have to get your hands dirty unless you use an enterprise version of Windows, in which case you can elect to not send anything to Microsoft. If you use a non-enterprise version like Windows 11 Home, you can also completely disable the telemetry service. You need to hit Windows plus R and in the run dialog, type services.msc, then enter. In there, look for something called connected user experiences and telemetry. You can double click that and in the general tab of the properties window that appears, you can set startup type to disabled, which means on the next reboot, this service won't start and you won't send anything to Microsoft. Now let's talk about macOS, because Apple talks a big game when it comes to privacy, but is it actually true? Out of the box, macOS does collect a lot of stuff. By default, they'll send to Apple your IP address, location, and some usage patterns, like all the apps you run and when you run them. And in Big Sur at least, these requests were sent unencrypted, which means that anyone who's on the same network as you can read them and use them, including your internet service provider and anyone they send data to. So the government as well. Now, hopefully in later versions, they fix that. No one's talking about it anymore. So one can hope that, yeah, it's fixed. Telemetry data out of the box includes browsing history, search history, crash data, performance and diagnostic data, location information, health information, if you use that on an iPhone, for example, and you sync it, all the info you entered in your Apple ID, the device serial number, some payment information if you entered a payment method, everything you bought using that Apple ID, and potentially even your government ID if that is required where you live to set up your account. All Spotlight search queries are also logged and sent to Apple. Everything you do on Apple's websites is also collected and logged if you are connected using your Apple ID. And if you use Safari, all your browsing data, browsing cache, download history, and login credentials are collected as well and linked to your Apple ID. And if you use Siri, you will also send to Apple the audio recordings of what you told that little useless piece of software. Now, fortunately, macOS lets you disable virtually everything from the system settings. You can just head over to the settings in the security and privacy page and going all the way to the bottom, you can click on analytics and improvements and uncheck everything. 
You can also go to Apple Advertising and uncheck personalized ads here. You'll still see ads in the Mac App Store, but at least they won't use your data to target you. In the location services, you can also make sure only the apps that really need access can get it. In general, it's a good idea to review permissions for each app and making sure they don't have access to your mic, screen recording or location if you don't feel like they need to. Now this won't remove all the data that is sent to Apple. Some checks are made when you boot up your Mac and that data is sent to Apple automatically. And these checks were made unencrypted before, but hopefully they're fixed now. So how bad is it? What does Apple do with all of this? Well, Apple say they mostly use this data to power and improve their services for data analysis, but they also use it to create a profile of your usage of your Mac and link that to the data on your iPhone, iPad or Apple Watch if you own these as well. With that profile, they will target you with ads on their various stores and the relevant data is shared with third parties that Apple uses to subcontract some of their services, like for example, the Apple Card. It's handled by an external bank, which will get access to all your payment data. So yeah, out of the box with everything checked, macOS is just as bad as Windows 11 is, except it's actually easier to disable mostly everything. And also it doesn't check in with third parties without telling you. Now, how about Linux? Well, Linux based operating systems do not collect any data out of the box with a few exceptions. Now, I should probably say Linux distributions don't collect any data because Android is Linux based and definitely collects a lot of data. So let's just talk about Linux distros. The first one is Ubuntu, who will collect telemetry data out of the box with no personal information at all. It's just hardware data, but it could still be used to fingerprint your device. Canonical doesn't currently have any ad server that I know about, so they probably only really use this to know what their users actually use and focus their efforts on that. But if you're uncomfortable with that, you can disable it at install. It would be much better if it was opt in rather than opt out. On top of that, you have the ability to turn some telemetry on in KDE settings but it's entirely optional and disabled by default in most, if not all KDE using distros. Gnome also has a telemetry tool that you have to install manually and run yourself if you want to send them any usage data. Apart from that, I have never heard of a distro that collects data in the background and doesn't inform you, apart from maybe the download numbers from the download button from a website, but these are just metrics, they don't know who downloaded what, or the amount of installs on Flathub, for example. But again, it's just a counter, it doesn't store personal information. So in short, if privacy is important to you, you only have one real choice and it's a Linux distribution. Every other operating system will by default have telemetry enabled. Now, whether telemetry is bad or not for you, that will be your choice. Now, if you can't use Linux for whatever reason, macOS is probably a bit less invasive, or at least it lets you disable stuff more easily. And Windows, as expected, is the worst of the bunch. Whatever Microsoft tool or app or OS you use, they collect a ton of data. Because, well, they run an ad service on a search engine and they want to sell these ads. So they will use any tool at their disposal to collect data and make sure it's difficult for you to stop that collection. So that's about it. The results were probably exactly what you were expecting, basically. But at least now you know specifically what kind of data these operating systems collect, what they do with it, and how to turn most of it off, which I hope helps a little bit. But what will really help moving to Linux is the segue to our sponsor. If you want to run Linux and you need a new computer, stop looking at devices that ship with Windows pre-installed. Buy something that was designed to run Linux perfectly. Tuxedo does just that. They make laptops and desktops that ship with Linux out of the box. The parts are picked specifically to run Linux. They have a big range of devices for every need and every price point, whether you want a small affordable laptop all the way up to a super powerful workstation. You've got plenty of customization options and they're based in Germany, but they ship to most countries in the world. All their laptops are also openable, repairable and upgradable, including the battery, the RAM and the SSD and sometimes even the wireless card. So if you need a new computer and you plan to run Linux on it, or if you just want the best Linux experience possible when buying new hardware, click the link in the description below and get yourself a tuxedo PC. 
So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications or to write a comment. And if you didn't like the video, well, you can always click that thumbs down button and write me a comment as well. And if you really enjoy the channel, there are plenty of ways to support it in the description below. You've got links for PayPal, LibraPay, Patreon, YouTube memberships, YouTube things. You know how all of this works, plus links to what else I do, like my weekly podcast and my social accounts. So thanks for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.